Hi friends, welcome to Stamping with Wow. How are you guys? We are getting ready to make this really cute uh let's still prepping it. Um it's a wooden crate. So isn't it cute? It holds our standard card bases and Oh, we need some lights around here, huh? Anyways, the crate is six by four and you can put the card you're making inside it. It holds them nicely. Um, it's really cute. It's gonna be a uh, fall Thanksgiving-ish themed and I think it's really nice. So we're gonna get the supplies together that we need for this. Uh, you're gonna need some designer series paper or uh, some printed paper. I'm going to be using the gilded, what is that called? I'm going to be using the gilded autumn specialty designer series paper from Stamping Up. Um, I still have just a few pieces left of this paper. I've been using it up quite a bit. And it's really pretty. I like the gold and bronze foiling on it. There it is. I need to get some lights on. What is wrong with me, huh? I need to see what's going on here. I also need to get my YouTube video on. <laughs> so how's everyone tonight? Oh, Tanya's watching. Hi, Tanya. How are you? Bring on. Oh. <laughs> I am doing very good. Now, the crate I'm going to be doing tonight is a crate that I learned how to do on. <sighs> I'm sorry. I was thinking of something. Anyways, um. The crate is I learned from Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. I used learned it a few years ago. I really f love it. I think it's really cute. When I learned it, I wanted to make it for everyone I knew. <laughs> That's what happens every time I learn a craft. I want to make it for every so, for everyone I know. Um, so, but first, what I want to do is update you on what's going on right now. So, Tanya says she is good. I'm glad to hear that. So nice to find out, see, hear from other people, especially with this horrible pandemic going on. I don't know. Did anyone notice in the news? So, it sounds like there is um, a vaccine finally, or pretty close. Um, but from what I think I read in the news today, it will not be ready till April. Uh, oh, thank you, Tanya. That's so nice of you. I'm glad you've been on a few times. Thank you for supporting me. Um, so hopefully sooner rather than later. I'm going to set this stuff aside. These are the cutting supplies, but we'll go over that in a minute. Um, I'm getting, trying to get together for my, I just put the phone on here, but I wanted to show you guys what I've been doing for, see if I can get some light on there. So I know a lot of you have seen all the Christmas cards I've been doing, posting. Some of these I have not posted. Some of these I made this weekend. Some of these I received in a swap and is gonna steal the idea from my swap partners. And I'm gonna offer a few of these in a class. So I'm thinking the class, and this is called a TP card. And tomorrow I learn another really, let me bring this one to the light. Sorry to go so fast, but. Um, huh. I say I'm gonna bring it to the light and it's all gray. So, this card is a dimensional card, it's really neat. So, it looks like that when it's flat, and then when you put it together. Now, some people use uh, 
adhesive Velcro, which I think might be good because if the person you send it to doesn't understand, you know, how else would they understand that it's a dimensional card? Um, but if they saw the little Velcro tabs, I think they'd realize, oh, these go together. But I had some magnets have handy because of all the mini albums I used to make. Um, and what I, uh, let's see, I didn't have any adhesive Velcro handy, so <laughs> that's why I used magnets. But I think people would understand it better with the adhesive Velcro. Uh, and when I say that, I mean, you'd have a piece of Velcro here. Oh, no, you wouldn't. You'd have it out here and on here. And then uh, whoever you sent this card to would see it and know something was needed to happen with the card. Like it wasn't there by accident. So that's why. This card was super easy to make. It looks pretty complicated, but I think it'd be fun in a card class. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm thinking of having the card class on... No, Tanya, I am still making albums. Um, I'm working on a folio right now using Stamping Up products, and I am going to one of uh, Tamara's workshops in October 21. And I was going to sign up for that North Pole one, but it, the kit's already sold out. So that was a bummer. Um, without, let me see if I can bring the... I'm making a folio, but I was putting, trying to put snow on it today. So I'm going to show you the folio. Let me put this back up on the stand so nobody's, it's accusing me of rotating and I did not rotate. There it goes. Okay, so here we go. Um, trying to see the comments on, oh, there we are. Okay, so this folio I made um, this weekend, it's not quite done. I just added snow to it. And then I'm going to use, I've also, I'm gonna put some of these, it'll, when I adhere this house, the snow I used um, made it pop up, like curl up, but I'm going to be fixing that when I adhere it. So I think this guy was gonna go here. And I got some trees that we're gonna, so I was just gonna add some dimension to the front cover. And then, let's just pretend. And some ribbons are gonna come out here. There's gonna be some paper here. That's not done yet. This is the, I think it's called coming home or something. Let me see. Oops. Here it is. Trimming the Town Designer Series Paper. So what I used was about 10 sheets of Whisper White cardstock. I, I'm gonna, when I remake it or teach it in a class, I'm gonna use the thick Whisper White just so it's thicker. And I got away with one pack of this Trimming the Town Designer Series Paper. So you get 12 sheets in here, it's 11.50. And then you'd need, uh, the Whisper White cardstock. And I did get this trimming and I'm gonna be using those ribbons. So when this opens, after everything's adhered, so this is what I've finished on the inside so far. I need another light. So I have a uh, Oops. I have a flap over here and we have a booklet. I need to make a, a tag for in the pocket. I still haven't decorated this. So I still, like I said, I'm not quite done with this, but I think this would be a great class. This would definitely cover if you wanted to do a small December daily, like maybe you take one picture a day kind of thing. Or if you wanted to put... Um, just pictures you took in the month of December, or this would be perfect for a one event kind of thing, because I think this is gonna hold somewhere around 30-ish, 20 to 30-ish kind of pictures. So then there's the waterfall. Now, the way I envision this, you could do four by sixes, because that's this measurement, but you could also do 
four by threes, like a four by three here, and then you could stamp a sentiment over here or vice versa. So I trimmed it so it looked like it'll uh, mirror the front cover. And then we would put something here, probably some pictures, maybe a sentiment. I was going to finish this, um, I think in something like this with a stamped image on top or maybe like this with a stamped image on top. So I'm not quite there. I didn't get to the point yet where I'm adding the stamped images. So that's where I'm at. And then on this, this is a pocket. So it flaps up. This tag looks pretty cute. I really like how this ribbon came out. And then this is just a regular pocket. So I didn't make it too heavy and I didn't make it too thick. Um, and it would also make a really nice gift for someone you know who loves mini albums. But um, this is a uh, folio, so it's not going to hold as many photos as a mini album. Mini albums typically hold over 100 photos where this one is... Um, yeah, it was Journey to the North Pole. Um, yeah, it's sold out right now. So I don't know if she's going to add more. That'd be nice if she did. So we'll see. If she does, I'll probably sign up for it. I, I think it's really nice. Thank you. I think this came out really cute. I can't wait to finish it up. And I can't wait. I saw someone made an advent calendar and they used these cutouts of the paper. And they put snow on it like I did. And they have put dimensionals on this. So this all popped up. So I think this would look really cute once I get all this finished since this isn't really a flower scene. So we won't be putting flowers usually on the mini albums, you know, us women and our flowers. <laughs> so it would just look something like this. So I'm going to see if I can get a class going on that. If you're interested and you're in Las Vegas, I'm also going to be creating a PDF for this one, and I'll offer this online. Um, we can, I'll film um, a YouTube video that will be available to people who place the order, and then you can watch, make it, and I'm also gonna try to offer an in-house class, in class for this. The other thing I'm working on is creating a December card class. I think I wanted to do it on like the 5th, I think the 5th is a Saturday, so I might do it on the 6th, which is the Sunday, Sunday afternoon, or Friday night, something like that. Um, so yeah, those are the things I'm working on right now to get us geared up for the holiday month of December. This would be a lot of fun. So today, I was starting to tell you about... Oh, also, if you're interested... Today is the last day for Paper Pumpkin. Um, yeah, so Tanya is saying that she messaged her. She's going to see what she gets in. She already sold 127 if she messed up on the count. And she has leftovers, she will let you know. Okay, thanks, Tanya. That was nice of you. Um, yes, so... Okay, now we're gonna get back to the crate. So the crate is really cute. And I'm gonna be, I showed you, I was gonna be using the Gilded Autumn Specialty Designer Series paper. I don't think my lights are in the right spot. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to tell you my usual spiel. Okay, so. This is my store website. This is the host code for November 2020. If you're placing an order, please use this host code. Unless your order gets over $150, it won't allow you to use the host code. And you will earn your own free product. For If you spend $150 or more, you will get 10%. It starts at 10% and then it goes up as your order goes up. 
can get up to, I think, 15% in free product. But at 15%, you're ordering like $450. So that's kind of excessive. If you want to place that size of an order, call me because you might want to become a demonstrator. You do not have to sell if you become a demonstrator. You can be a VIP customer, which just means you're in it for the discount. And who doesn't love a 20% off discount? That was why I signed up. Anyways... <laughs> So let's get started on the crate. <laughs> Enough of that, Jen. Stop it. Okay, what you are going to need. So all this paper I cut right now is from one sheet of 12 by 12. You are going to need two. That's what I still have scraps of. So I'm using cinnamon cider because I, I like this brown. The first box I made, this isn't stamping up paper, but this is made with crumb cake. So, uh, the, I mean, the, this designer series paper is not stamping up, but this crate, this paper I used here, this is the crumb cake paper. So I did use stamping up as the base. I just didn't decorate it with stamping up because at the time I thought they were going to be sold out of that gilded autumn for quite a while. So it didn't make any sense to make the crate. Anyways, let's not talk about all that. Anyways, okay, so you're going to need one sheet of 12 by 12, and then you're going to need a couple of sheets of that Gilded Autumn or some scraps of it, or your favorite fall paper, whatever suits you. This, These two squares are 6 by 4, so you're going to want two squares cut 6 by 4. That's going to be for the... I don't, you know what? I lied. You only need one of these. Sorry. You're going to need one square of 6 by 4. Then you're gonna need four strips. These are four, these are all measuring one and one fourth by seven inches. And you're want, gonna wanna score a half inch on both ends. So I didn't score this one yet. I was gonna do that one with you guys. So this paper measures one and one fourth inches. Um by seven and on the so I'm gonna here this is the half inch line right there I like using this trimmer for the scoring because this little score tool just leaves the tiniest see how tiny that line oh that might help too see how small that little crease is so it gives you a nice small fold whereas um those scoreboards kind of give you a bigger groove for your fold so I like these little clean fold lines so you want to do that to all four strips on both sides. It's a half inch score on all four, on all, sorry, on all four strips, both sides, half inch score. So those, that. You're going to want two strips that are eight inches by three eighths of an inch. These are going to be the handle of the crate. And then you're going to want two pieces that are four by three inches. And these are going to be the sides of the crate. The next thing you're going to need is a piece of cardstock. Not cardstock. What am I saying? Um, I forgot the name of it. This is. It's not cardstock. It is something else. <laughs> um, it's like the. I can't believe I can't remember what this is. Anyways, you're going to need, this is like the back of papery, a uh, paper pad or, um, anyway, so you want something a little stiff, but not too stiff and not too thick. But I will tell you that the sheet of paper that comes with, um, the Gilded Autumn is not strong enough. Uh, God, the word is just on the tip of my tongue. I just can't get it. Can't get it, can't get it. Um, anyway, so this might be enough because all we need, uh, this one for sure will be enough. This is like eight and a half by 11. So let's just cut it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this chipboard. There you go. I knew I could remember it. Yeah, Tanya just typed it in, chipboard, yep, chipboard. Okay, so we're gonna make this chipboard about a uh, quarter of an inch smaller than these pieces that we cut here. 
So we need one for our bottom. So that was six by four. So I'm going to do three and three fourths. Oh, wrong blade. <laughs> Ooh, that came out. Three and three fourths by two and three fourths for my four. Two and three fourths. So this is going to go with my piece that was four by three. And the reason we're just cutting it a quarter inch smaller is um, sometimes when we work with chipboard, we we wrap pieces around it, and we're not doing that. I, I don't even mind if that little piece tore. But it's going to glue. We're going to glue it right on top of here, and then the designer series paper is going to get glued right on top of that. So no one's really going to see it. If you're afraid someone's going to see it, I would say ink the edges, but we're not uh, going to make this all high tech. We're going to keep it pretty easy. And uh, see, a good color to ink the edges would be, you could use crumb cake, you could use the cinnamon cider, that would work good too, I didn't bring that upstairs. I'm going to use early espresso. And all you got to do is just... Dip the edges in the ink pad. Like, you don't have to do a lot with this because the most anyone's going to see is the edge of the chipboard. They're not going to see, um, they're not going to see the sides or anything because the paper's going to cover it up. So that's all you have to do as far as inking the edges for that. Um, and then you want the four one and one fourth by seven inch strips. So let's see if that's seven. Oh, not by seven, sorry. You're gonna just want that to six inches. So I'm just gonna cut these at the one and one fourth. This blade, I think this paper, uh, this chipboard I'm using is a little bit thicker than my blade I'm using, so it's not quite cutting all the way through. I probably could run it one more time through there. Let's see if I can do that better. All right, so at one and one fourth, sorry, you can't see that. Let me come down a little bit. All right, so I'm at the one and one fourth and let's see if that doesn't give it a better, yeah, that helped a little bit better. So we just want four of those. This is a pretty simple project as far as chipboard to me is like a recyclable type product because you actually have chipboard in a lot of things around your house. A cereal box um, is made with chipboard. It might be a little thinner than this particular chipboard I'm using, but it would still work. And it needs to be seven inches, so, or I mean six, so. Come, oh, I didn't need to open that up. <laughs> So that's my six. So I just want to trim all four of these down to six inches. And then all we need to do is our designer series paper and half the battle will be won. We'll just have to glue it all together after that. So we have our Oh, this is four by three, huh? Okay, so that is a side. I need two of those. Silly me. And I need one, a six by four. So that should be five and three fourths. So I'm at the five and three fourths. And then this should be three and three fourths this way. There we go. And I'm hoping I can still get my four by three, which would be three and three fourths by two and three fourths. I'm gonna make sure, okay, two and three fourths, which is right there. Okay, so now what you should have is two of those, four of those, one of these, and then 
You should have two of those, four of those, one of these, and then you still have your two strips that are gonna be your handles. Okay, so now let's cut the designer series paper real quick because it's easier just to cut everything at once. So again, those are gonna mirror the sizes that we cut the chipboard. And here's the Gildamed Autumn paper I still have left. Now this time you're gonna need, cause you're gonna do the inside of the crate and the outside of the crate. But on the bottom piece, I'm not gonna cover the bottom of the outside crate. I'm just gonna put paper on the inside of the crate. So you might wanna pick out what paper you want for your inside bottom piece of your crate. And in my, since I'm using a lot of scraps, the constraint I have is it has to be this, you know, size that I can cover. So I could use this brown, like, hound's tooth. That one's pretty, too. That's the right size, too. So I could use one of those. Um, there, it's going to be a three and three fourths by five and three fourths, like this chipboard, because we still want some of that brown cider to show through. But like I said, we want to cover the edges like so. That could be cute. This one would be cute on the bottom of the box too. And then what you can do is you can fill the crate with some goodies and give them as gifts to your friends, neighbors. You could use some of that uh, cellophane basket wrap and wrap it up. You could put baked goods in there. That would be pretty too. I'm still debating about that one. I don't know if I want stripes. And we could always use this one. This is the mint macaroon, but I'm not sure I want the mint macaroon in there, but that would look good too. I think I'm gonna go with one of those brown, the early espressos between this pound's tooth or this uh, chevron pattern. Or, look at that, but that's too close to being dirt. <laughs> okay, so we'll set that aside for now. Let's cut, I'm gonna go with this one because it's pretty close to the size I need. So I need this to be three and three fourths by five and three fourths. So that's my base. So these three pieces are gonna go together as the bottom of my crate. Next, I'm gonna need some straps or the sides of the crate. So I have four here. So I want four one color for the inside of my crate and I want four of another color um, or another style for the outside of my crate. So on this part, I think I would like not that, but I do like this. This would be pretty for the sides or the the two ends. That one's pretty. Uh, I don't know if I really like that for the sides of the crate. This one's good. The stripes would be cute for the sides of the crate. And then I was thinking we would add some stitched leaves to this. Um crate too so maybe that would be cute with the leaves on top of it I'm trying to think if I like that or should we add some some gold foiling in here remember if the paper you're picking is directional make sure you so if I cut this one it'll be like this so I won't get a lot of this It'll be more random. So maybe we'll go with this foil random. So this one I would want on the outside of my stri my strips. So my strips are six inches. So this is 12 by 12 paper. And I'm gonna do one inch by six inches. So I'm just gonna cut the whole strip. So I just need, actually I need um, two of these full strips. And I'm just going to cut these into six inches. So that's two of them. And then I'm just going to need 
two more. So I have four. So I'm going to use these on the outside because I think they're really pretty. And then on the inside, I'm going to use... I'll use these. This is nice. Oh, this is directional and it's not 12 going this way. So maybe I'll switch it. Just like to keep it simpler. Oh, well, this one's not directional either. How long is this? Nine. Oh well, we'll just have to deal with it. I like this stripe. One. Oh, let's just cut um, three inches so we don't have to trim each one individually. So I'm gonna cut these one by six. I'm just cutting a big chunk so I don't have to trim them down to the six individually. So here we go. So now we got one, two, and I wanna make sure that's an inch because it'll come back and haunt me if it's not. I think it's slightly under. <sighs> Oh, that's the score. All right, so there's three, uh, three six-inch strips. We need one more, and I'm just gonna cut it again because I just didn't feel like that one I had left over was a full inch. So, and then I need to do the sides. So the two side pieces, which were four by three. I will, um, in the comments below after I'm done, I will type in all the measurements. Nothing further is going to go on the straps. And then the next we're going to do is these. So we're going to need two pieces of paper for each one of these. So we need four sheets. Two for the inside and two for the outside. So the my inside crate is using this paper. and this paper. So on the sides, I want to make sure that it still matches with this stuff. So let's see. I, I don't know, I'm using that on my stripes or this, the, the wood on the, the planks on the side. So I don't know if I want to use that one. Let's see. It's, maybe that would be cute on the inside and it matches nicely. So we need four by, or we need three and three fourths by three and three fourths by two and three fourths and another two and three fourths. There we go. All right, so then that was the inside of my crate. Now the outside of my crate, what I know so far is I have these for my for my side plank or side these boards right here. <laughs> so um, the next, so I need something for the two outsides. Actually, I kind of like that pumpkin squash paper, but I don't have any more of it. So. We could do that, but then that's a lot of white and gold on the outside. So I'm not sure I really want all that. But we could put, you know what we could do is, we could move these two to the outside and use these in the inside. So let's do that. I think I'd be happier with that. So I'm gonna cut this whole strip by two and three fourths. And then I'm going to cut this by three and three fourths. Not the cutter. And one more time. There we go. So, what I decided, I think I'm done with paper. This one's for the inside. These are going to be on the outside with these. That's the inside. 
is the outside. These are the straps. Okay, so let's get that ink pad I had a moment ago. Oh, here it is. And we're going to ink these edges so that if the chipboard shows, it's not showing too bad. So I'm going to move my stuff off my chair. Move my chair over. And let's get crafting. So, because all you're going to see are the sides, and I want the sides covered pretty good, I'm just pushing it into the ink pad. It would take more effort and wouldn't be worth it to using a sponge dauber or anything because the, oops, the designer series paper is really going to cover the, the top and bottoms of these papers. It's just the sides that someone would see. So this way they'll just see a dark brown. And this is going much faster than using a blending brush or anything like that. So just getting the job done, right? It's looking like I'm not getting as much coverage. That looks pretty good, huh? I don't think it has to look perfect. All right, and then I had another side I need to do. It's another four by three piece. Okay, and oh, my bottom. I don't know if anyone would see the bottom, probably not, but just in case we'll ink it. Ooh, I keep bending my chipboard. Obviously, I'm pressing harder than I need to. I was just going to say, you don't have to press very hard, but obviously I am. Okay. Ooh. So that's it for the inking. I'm going to get some wet wipe real quick because I have inky fingers as usual. Always, if you're a stamper, keep wet wipes around. They work so nice. Okay, now we're just going to get adhering. And if you want to stay nice and clean, I would use Stampin' Seal. If you want to get nice and sticky, pull out the combo. Hoping the stamp and steel will go really quick if I just do my thing with it. All right, so this you can put the cinnamon cider or this um, either side's going to get covered with them. Just make sure when you put your your designer series paper is cut the exact same size as the chipboard, so just make sure you cover it before you. Um, and I'm just going to adhere. Now, I might switch to Stamping Seal Plus on the sides just because it's going to get touched more on the sides. Now, when you want to do this piece, you just want to um, center it. It can just be a visual centering. You don't have to get out of ruler or anything. Just like that. Okay. So what this does with that chipboard in there, it just makes it stronger so this will hold its shape. And you can put some, a little bit of weight in here. And when I mean a little, I mean a little bit of weight. I don't mean 10 pounds. Store all your stuff in here. Um, okay, so we can just keep doing that with our sights. So let's go ahead. So one and the cinnamon cider is going to get in here too. So you can decide um, if you want your chipboard on the inside of your box or on the outside. I am going to make a point of cutting off these little torn pieces I have though. Okay, so I'm going to have the chipboard be in the inside of my box. So I think it's easier just to keep using the stamping seal um, right here on the chipboard instead of pulling out glue 
again you want this centered and it, a visual center is fine it does not have to be perfect If someone's noticing whether or not this was centered, they're looking way too hard at this couple of sheet of paper pro project. You know, it's not like, I think the overall look is amazing considering how little of supplies you use to make it. And then we're just gonna cover it up now with, um, and I said this was gonna be on the inside, so we'll go ahead and put this on the inside less chance of someone seeing the chipboard. Might as well reduce that option. Oops. Come on. There we go. And then we want to put our other paper on this side. So since this paper I'm doing right now is obviously directional, well, I'm thinking it looks directional, like top to bottom, because the big pumpkins are all going in, and these little pumpkins are all in one direction. So just keep that in mind when you continue the assembly of the project, is directional paper has to stay directional. Otherwise you end up with some upside down goods. <laughs> Again, I'm just visually centering. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to move on to these stripes. So, it's easier to add the chipboard to everything before you start um, assembling. Oh, shoot. You know what? Oh, good thing I used the stamp and Seal. It'll be easier to rip off than liquid glue. But let's take... This is going to be the inside, and I think I want the straps to go in here. So I'm going to take off this piece of cinnamon cider I did. I shouldn't have added that yet. I'm okay with it tearing off that piece of chipboard. Um, I'm just going to glue it back on, but I needed my straps. <laughs> I always forget about the technical parts. So we still want to add these straps. So let's go ahead and... Wait on that. Hold off right there. Hopefully you weren't caught up to me yet. Um, and then we are going to put the chipboard on these strips. And it doesn't matter if it's on the scored in or scored outside because you can always change the direction of those. Um, and we're just going to let's use the, this is Stampin' Seal Plus. I just feel like these um, these handles are gonna, or these sides will take on a little bit more. Oh, what is going on? Am I upside down on this? No. Let's try again. I having a malfunction. I think my stamping seal got a little loose, so let's. Try her again. Okay. Oh, well, it's coming out, but it's definitely loose. Wonder if I can fix this so it's tight. All right, I'm gonna just change change the cartridge. So here's a refill. I will play with it later when I don't have people watching me. <laughs> All right. I 
this isn't even, I'm gonna rip that off because it's not sticking down. Feed it. There it goes. All right, now there we go. That's what it was supposed to do originally. It's this one spot. Okay, so then we'll just stick that down. So this should fit within the parameters of the score lines because they were both scored at six inches. So. I'm going to fold these up real quick just so I can see it better. And make sure I'm staying within the parameters. Okay. Piece is showing down crazy. Just whip through these real quick. It doesn't like the starter. It doesn't like that starting area. So I'm just going to come down this way. For some reason, it doesn't like that one corner. It didn't like it on the last one either. So it's all right. We can outsmart a piece of chipboard. Let's see. That one works. I probably should put these on the paper instead of trying to not get it everywhere. There we go. There we go. And one more. Oh, I grabbed the other. So the regular stamping seal replace snail, and this one is supposed to be equivalent to tear and tape. Just so you know. But we still do have the tear and tape, so whichever one rocks your world. Alright, so now we want to put um these are the insides of our, and these are the outsides. So let's have this be the ins, insides, so it'll go like that, right? Okay, so we'll put the stripes on the inside. Oh, that's not good. I thought these were an inch. Were these not an inch? Where's my trusty ruler? Oh, no, these are one and one eighths. Huh. That's not going to work. The easiest thing to do would be to cut the... Six by one eighths. I think I have enough to do that. Sorry, that wasn't right. That was supposed to be one, oh, one and one fourth, but it was supposed to be one. Oh, wrong trimmer. It's supposed to be one. So I think I told you one, but we're going to do one and one eighth. So one, two, I just want to cover it so I'm not gonna worry about it too much and I apologize for my three mix-ups but if you get through this you'll end up with a pretty cool looking crate so stick with me don't worry we're going to do it. Okay, so back to these straps. We're going to put another piece of cinnamon cider, which originally we wouldn't do that, but 
somebody who's it's just so annoying that it's pulling the paper up instead of okay I'll start with that we just need the chipboard to get covered but again kind of stop doing this we don't have time for this top layer of this chipboard is tearing off instead of playing nicely with me. So we'll just use some Tombow. The reason I don't like to use the Tombow is because my fingers get a very sticky film on them after a while. Because I'm kind of messy with the Tombow. I don't know about you. I only know about me. I'm messy. See? But, but I can't keep having the stamping seal not work right. You're going to think it's a bad product when it's really this chipboard I'm using. There we go. Back on track. Show must go on. Even if the chipboard doesn't want to cooperate. So in Las Vegas, it got real cold this weekend and it is still cold. So my house went, I think I had two weeks where the AC didn't come on and the heater didn't come on. Usually my heater's not on this early in the year. So it's really kind of, for me, it's a little annoying. Usually I consider November like a free month of utilities. Because the AC has stopped kicking on, so my electric goes down to under $100 a month. And my gas doesn't get high. Usually it stays at $40 a month until December. But I can tell you it's already kicking on, so we'll see. At least, you know, it's cheaper than the AC coming on. Okay, time for assembly. I might use glue some more. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to... Oh, you know what I was supposed to do? Cut this bigger so it went on. Anyways, we're just going to make it work. Okay, so... The first piece of chipboard I want to align directly with this, like so. Oh, but I need it to fold, right? So I'm going to have it bend like, is that, that's not right because this isn't the size of this. That's right. All right, so this is the outside of my box. So we're going to do that. Sorry, I'm working like you guys are upside down and you're not. So I want the bottom of my box to align with the bottom of this side. So see when it folds, it's going to go like this. <sighs> I have another error that I messed up on. But you guys are going to never want to watch me again. Anyways, this is what we're going to do for now. And then we'll make some construction tabs. So the bottom tab is going to go line to the bottom. And the top strap is going to line to the top. Okay. And we're going to do that on this side as well. So we'll just put some glue over here. I'm going to work on it up 
upside down. Make sure my paper is in the right direction. And that one's going to go on the bottom. I think. Yeah. Okay. Again. And there we have. So that's what it's going to look like. But these pieces, so see these tabs were had to be in here before this guy gets in here. Does that make sense? And we still need these tabs on this side too. Oh, somebody's getting a little hot because I have on a big hoodie. It's cold where I work, so I dress warm, but then it's not cold in my house. Okay, so now I'm going to adhere to these two of these, these straps to this side. We can tear off this chipboard that did not play nicely with me. So we're just going to add some more glue here. Actually, we're probably going to need the construction stripes before we do this. So I'm going to wait a second because I kind of messed up on something I just realized. Um, and we're going to need some construction strips to fix it. So what is a construction strip? Boy, you guys get to learn a lot today. So I forgot to... Um, the two side panels, I didn't cut excess for scoring, so I'm going to add construction strips to adhere the two pieces so they connect to the crate. So I just cut these two strips. Uh, usually you'd go the, maybe I need to go the length. I only need two strips, so I'll go the length. So I'm cutting one inch by four inches is what I need. Um... And I'm going to trim this down to four. And then this is going to get scored at a half inch. Let's see. Yeah, that's the... So what I'll use this for is, because I forgot to add a half inch to my paper on both sides, I need to... Um, this is called a construction strip. So what this is going to do is it gives me that scored end so I can adhere it to my crate. And we are here. There we go. And we're just going to score that. And I only need four inches of that. There we go. Okay. So I will fix these measurements um, in the comments. So really this is, for chipboard it should have been four and a half by three on just the cardstock piece. So you just fold it and you can use glue. We're going to glue one end to the crate. And we want to make sure we're on the bottom part of the crate. So let's take a look at that designer series paper and make sure it's at the bottom. So see my pumpkins? So this is the bottom. There we go. And that's a construction strip right there. Same on this side. We're going to take and glue one side of this. because I tried to throw it together after working on my folio. Let's try and get that done for tonight. Anyways, okay, so then what we want to do is with our bottom, uh, it's going to show. Let me see if I can take this off. I don't want the construction stripe to show, so I'm just going to glue it underneath. So I'm going to put glue on this end And I'm going to line it up and stick it under. And 
when I say line it up, that's what's nice about using a wet adhesive at this moment. You have a little working room. Okay, so we're going to survive this. There we go. Same on this side. I can just put some wet adhesive in here. Bring along the construction strip. Managed to pull that off. <laughs> okay, so now we want to add these stripes, stripes, these uh, straps to the other side of our box. And we're just gonna, on the bottom of the box, adhere the tab. Wait, whoop. no, we're not, not that way. Bad, bad. Sorry, these are going on the inside, not the outside. <sighs> Jen, Jen, Jen. Man, tonight is just not going well. Anyways, we'll get to the end, don't worry. One more piece of glue. This is, see, now my fingers are getting sticky. That's when I don't like the wet adhesive. use a bone folder. And just give it a good push down. Make sure it's where you want it. There we go. And that's the... So three of the sides are down. So this guy's going to go down here at the top because we want to line it up to the top and then we're going to put the decorative paper on. So a minor his mishap in the, in the construction of the actual crate. I apologize for that. But we are catching up. Let's just get that in place. that. We want it to line up to our top. And then we'll take this. Okay, and this will stiffen out once we add the chipboard to it. So we've survived. So you can't tell that I had a few mishaps on my crate, which makes me happy. And we can add these sides again, so we can just get out any of those stamping seals, or you can use your wet adhesive. Now, wet adhesive not always as forgiving as those other it's hard for you to see but I'm just kind of visually centering it again now see how my sides look very strong again with this one we're just gonna put some wet adhesive on here
finish off the inside with our um, strips. There's three. Oh, here, this one has tape on it. That's right, we found out the hard way that this stuff didn't fit. What this does, let's try some stamp and seal. My fingers are driving me crazy at this point. what our inside crate's looking like. Let me get that. There we go. Okay, and then we'll do some more stamp and seal. And there's the inside of the crate, and oh, we need a little glue there. Got a little lifting. So we'll just fix that lifting right up. And we're gonna add the paper. So this is gonna go like that. And we're gonna add some leaves afterwards. So this will look really pretty um, with those, the painted leaf dies. And we're gonna use some sentiments from the country home. Simply thankful for all the good things. We could have happy harvest blessings. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and finish this. I know I took you guys through a train wreck, but I'm gonna get you there in the end and that's really to me all that matters. Hopefully if you try this project you end up with a crate in the end that you like. That's the other oop I need it all the way at the end. There we go. And we'll add the straps at the end. Okay. You could give this as a nice gift to someone and you could put um, note cards in here or birthday cards or I mean it's it's big enough to hold some cards in here that would look really cute along with some cute little fall goodies maybe. There we go. So like I was showing you on the other one. So these are cards with envelopes um, in these plastic envelopes and these clear envelopes. And you just stick them in there and see they fit really nicely in there. So it's, it is a nice, like it could easily be a nice gift. You could wrap this, put a nice big ribbon on it. Um, but what we're going to do still, we're not done with this yet. I'm not done with my torture. 
So I have a bunch of the painted leaves. Are they called painted leaves? The die set is stitched leaves, not painted, John. Stitched. Okay, so these are the dies. They're really neat. You could just get a leaf cut out, or you can use the center piece of the die and get this stitching on the dies, which I think just makes them look spectacular. This is in um, the bronze foil. Isn't that pretty? I just think that the bronze, I think any of the foil papers take a nice, take such a pretty um, imprint of the dies. This is, uh, I believe, Mossy Meadow, Cajun Craze. There's little leaves. They're really, love the leaves. If you cannot tell. So then what we're going to do, remove those cards, put them back in the old crate. And I was thinking of putting a cluster of leaves. That's probably a foil. And we could put like maybe the cut back that leaf. Put that like so. And then we could um, put one of those little ones on here. Something like that. A nice little cluster of the leaf. And then we'll add um, the sentiment. All right, so let's go ahead and, I think I'm gonna trim off all of these stems. I don't need them for what I'm making. So I want this one and this one and this one. So what I did is one day I was just playing with all the leaves and using up scratch paper so or scrap paper and um, I just did a bunch of leaves so I don't need to die cut a bunch right now I'm just using what I had. Um, so let's go ahead and I want the bronze to be a focal color so we'll just put the Cajun craze down here. I wanted the bronze not to be the dominant one, but like so. And then we're gonna put this nice, it's almost like a maple right there in the center. I don't think I got enough glue on that. And we'll hide that butt with this cupcake leaf. There we go. And then what we could add are some, that leaf has to come up. There we go. And what do I have? I think I have sequins for fall, which might not be. Oh, I have champagne rhinestones. That's what I have. Oh, we have those. Those might look cute. Or I have some champagne rhinestones. Oh, let's see. Oh, Tanya said they had some snow, but it all melted. Oh, that's a bummer. So we could put some rhinestones on there. Let's do the sentiment and see what it's crying out for. <coughs> okay, so I don't want to take that out of the screen. Some of this mess I have lying around. Oop, there went some light. Okay, wouldn't be a Stampin' Up! video without some Stampin'. Um, we could stamp on some crumb, or not crumb, sorry, uh, leftover K 
Cajun or cinnamon cider, but I ran out. So I might have to use another sheet, which is fine. I had so many boo boos on this go around. So, and maybe a die cut would be cute. You know which one, if you've been watching me at all, you know which one I'm gonna pull out, the painted labels dies. Well, we could use a plaid tidings die. Let's see, does that thankful fit in there? Yeah, it does, let's do that. That sounds like fun. And we can stop looking, because I think painted labels are downstairs anyways. <laughs> Oh, I could have. No, I don't think that's big enough, but just to work. So I'm going to cut a piece of this. And I just, sometimes I just lay a die on top of the paper and cut it in a way I know it's big enough for the die. My die cuts right here off to the side, so and then we're gonna oops take out a block. And I'll for sure we fit it. And I'm going to use early espresso. And wish me luck on this part. Just want to make sure I'm getting in as centered as possible. That looks pretty. Looks almost like leather, huh? With that cinnamon cider. Okay, so now the question still is, do we want to see some of these sequins on there? No, I think the champagne rhinestones it is. Now, this take your pick tool. The putty end is beautiful for this. I recently chopped off all my nails. I was wearing gels for a while, and when I took it off, they just had had enough for a while. And I want to do them up again. Sorry, the dogs. <laughs> um, my son's coming home, and the dogs have to alert me. So anyways, using my nails would be really hard dealing with these. So this uh, take-your-pick tool with the putty end is wonderful at playing with rhinestones that's for sure oh. the bad part is if you want to move them after you place them it doesn't like that the adhesive usually sticks to the paper and so think twice about where you're i think i want to move that a little bit and something more like this maybe maybe i'm Something more where it's here in the center. That looks cute. Okay, so we're gonna, is that lifting? Yeah, so we're gonna add some more glue to this guy. We're gonna stick him about here. And then we're gonna glue around the edges. I think some of this glue is in here, this gap here. There we go. Okay, let's add the straps. So what I w did last time is I used, um, I used, what are those things, grommets or uh, 
but I think I'm just gonna use glue and we can use some ink to make it look like something's there. So I'm gonna glue this end. Hi. Hello. I'm on a live Facebook. Okay. And I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Uh, the Take Your Pick tool, I believe, is $10. It comes with a putty. This thing comes with a lot. It comes with this pointy end. It comes with a spatula end. It also comes with um, the embossing ends, a big and a small. And then this putty. And then it also can use attachment-wise... Sorry for that. I'm looking for the little embossing ends. You know the little rounded ends when you're... Here we are. Here's the... So see how it has that... Oh, everything's falling now. That's dead. Um, it has those little bally embossing ends. So these are the ones you'd use in a scoreboard. It, so it comes with that, it comes with these, and it comes with one of these. And you can buy refills of this putty. Um, and it works like toothpaste or something. You just, uh, you can wipe it, and you don't want too much at a time. But then you squeeze it a little bit, and a little more putty comes out. So in here is the putty, and when you squeeze it down, uh, more of the putty, the new putty comes out. And it just has a little tack to it, so it'll pick up little things for your fingers, so you don't have to kill yourself. Another good thing for this is if you're using dimensionals, like if you're using dimensionals, you stab the dimensional. You know, it's If you've already placed it somewhere, and then you stab it, the backing will come off. So it's really nice, like, it helps if you have a hard time lifting backings off of, like, the stamping dimensionals. This little pokey end works great. It's also a paper piercer, I believe. I don't really use these because I have a stylus. Like, I have two styluses, so I don't need this. But I do use this and that spatula. I use those two all the time. And I use this. It also has a, a attachment you can buy, which is the brush for die cuts. So I also don't use that because I already have a brush, a die cut brush, but that's what it comes with. It comes with the foam and the die cut. I use this inside a box so that all my pieces stay in there but you can it they have a brush head that will screw in right here as well so it's you could buy multiples of these and they have a little a few uses for them so it's to me it's quite handy but what I mainly use it for is just like this best tool I have in addition to all the other tools I have right <laughs> best tool I have for this <laughs> and then we're just gonna glue this stripe right here make sure I'm staying in camera and I'll hold that down and then because I'm lazy now we could just put some rhinestones right there or we could just color it so it looks or you can even put some sequins right there and it'd look like you have some kind of um Gosh, what are those things called? Brads, that's it. Oh my goodness, that's so funny. It looked like you have a brad in there. I just didn't feel like adding another brad, but I did put brads in here. And we're just gonna do the same thing on this side with my other. This was that piece of uh, cardstock we cut three eight three-eighths by eight inches. If you don't like how high up it is, you could cut it down to six. I wouldn't go some shorter than six, though. Because you do want it to look like one of these handle 
rope things. And then we can put that like so. And then maybe we'll add a bow to the sentiment area we did. All right, guys, stick in. Let's. There we go. Let's go ahead and do this. And I just kind of bend them down so they hold out like this. Really cute if you fill it up with some nice gifts for your neighbors or friends, your coworkers. Um, you could add a couple of cards to it and then some goodies inside too. So we can add some of the, there's some ribbons that match with this um, gilded ribbon paper. There's this pretty shimmery copper one and this really pretty mint macaroon. Those are part of the gilded sweet bundle. They're really pretty. Um, I'm thinking of this one with a nice little bow. So let's go ahead and such a hard time opening these little plastic wraps. And I love to use this little bow maker because, or you've seen me all wrap the ribbon around my fingers. <laughs> That's how much I don't want to just try to tie a regular bow. Like I know I can't. Not that I can't, I know that this makes my bows look fabu. Not kidding. It's really easy. You wrap it twice, you uh, cross the ends, and then you tie a simple knot. Like, who, anyone could tie a bow like this. And this little bow maker came from Amazon for less than $8. And you can tie the tiniest bow in the world without driving yourself crazy. I think I kind of messed up that one. Really. And then what I like to do is take a glue dot. Stick that on the glue dot. And then I'm gonna stick it, oops, right there. And if my tails aren't cooperating, I will glue them down, but I'm a, there it is. That tail is kind of wandering. So, Stick that. Oh, it's covering up my words. There we go. And there's your finished basket. I think it came out really cute. Uh, sorry for the couple of things I missed. <laughs> but in the end, I did get you a completed crate. And I think they are really cute for giving as a gift. Something to be thankful for. I hope you have a great evening. Um, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. I love that bow maker too, Tanya. Thank you for watching, Tanya. Um, talk to you later. Bye, guys.